All right, podcast number three for our chapter seven that deals with cell structure and function. This one's going to deal with the uh, two types of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic, and uh, all things that cells have in common. Uh, first off, let's go with the things that cells have in common. Every single cell has a cell membrane. Doesn't matter if you're prokaryotic or eukaryotic, you're going to have a cell membrane. Cell membranes have some of the most important jobs uh, ever. They control what comes in and what comes out of the cell, which is an extremely, extremely important job. Uh, for example, uh, any kind of nutrients will come in through the cell membrane and any kind of waste or other cell materials that need to be moved out. And that is all controlled by the cell membrane. All right. Cell membrane structure is pretty basic. Basically, it's a phospholipid bilayer. Bilayer means two. If you don't know how to spell that, it's phospholipid, just the way that it sounds, and then bilayer with bi meaning two. All right, a phospholipid is going to look like this. Let's get a different color in here. It's got a polar head and two nonpolar tails. And if you can remember your triglyceride structure, basically this is your glycerol molecule. You have two fatty acid tails. And then instead of there being a, uh, instead of there being like another fatty acid right there, uh, there's going to be a phosphate group sticking off here. It's actually over here on these second ones, but I draw it this way. And so the polar part has the phosphate in it. So this is called your polar head. And then down here, you have some non-polar tails. And so what happens is when you toss a whole bunch of phospholipids in the water, they form this little orientation where you have the polar heads to the outside and the nonpolar tails to the inside. So this is why uh, phospholipids and uh, lipid bilayers control what comes in and comes out because you have polar stuff and then you have a lot of nonpolar stuff. And polar things can get this far, but then they get stopped here. But there's a lot of nonpolar areas here, so a lot of nonpolar things can get all the way through here. But it's pretty effectively a barrier for both items. Okay, also within the uh, phospholipid bilayer, you're going to see some proteins embedded. So all of these things right here are all going to be uh, proteins. So here's a channel protein. Here's a glycoprotein. It acts like a, it's a marker protein. Uh, and then here you got another protein channel. And this one might be a receptor protein. So everything in one of these are proteins. All right. So if you think of a cell membrane, it's pretty much made out of two main things, phospholipids and then proteins. There'll be some other stuff in there, but we'll cover those uh, another podcast here in the chapter. All right. So that's the first of the two things they all have in common. The next one is going to be DNA. You got to have some DNA because DNA contains the instructions. Let's make that line a little bit bigger. There we go. It's got the instructions for making every single protein. So if you can remember stuff from previous chapters where you had transcription and translation, that will get you from DNA to RNA to protein, which is your, your central dogma of biology. All right. Now, some cells will keep their DNA in a nucleus, some cells just keep the DNA floating around in the cytoplasm. All right, now, I'm going to go back here a little bit. Remember how this up here, it says that there are two things that have in common? Some places you're going to see that they have four. And so here's what number three would be. Number three would be ribosomes. Remember how DNA has the instructions for making protein? Remember that ribosomes are used to make proteins. And this is the site where translation occurs. So remember the ribosome will use rRNA to attach mRNA, and then the mRNA will be read with the help of tRNA to translate the code into a polypeptide or protein chain. So number three would be a ribosomes. And then finally, number four would be the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is the jelly that is where all the organelles are going to be. And technically, the cytoplasm is everything between, so it's everything between 
the nucleus, and the cell membrane. And I'm just going to use a CM for cell membrane. So if you would change this to all cells have four things in common, number one being the cell membrane, number two being DNA that's found in either a nucleus or just floating in the cytoplasm, number three is going to be the ribosome because you're going to need to make your proteins, and then number four being the cytoplasm itself. Those are the four things that all cells have in common. All right, what are your two types of cells? The first type of cell is called a prokaryotic cell. Now, prokaryotic cells, this prefix pro, this means first, because these were the cells that evolved first on this planet. But this is how I used to remember it. I look at it as pro means no, because prokaryotic cells Prokaryotic cells have no nucleus, so pro means, means no. All right, so when we come with prokaryotic cells, no nucleus or membrane-bound organelles. So as you look over here in this picture of this bacterium, and remember, all bacteria are prokaryotic cells. You could also say prokaryotic cells are all bacteria. This is your typical prokaryotic cell, very similar to like E. coli being one of the more famous of the bacterium. As you can see here, you don't see any organelles. There's no nucleus in here. You're not going to see a mitochondria. You're not going to see an ER of any sort. There's no Golgi bodies, etc. But I do want to point out some of the key features here. Okay? For example, the DNA is a single circular molecule that is usually connected to the inside of the cell membrane. So maybe this is attached to the inside of the cell membrane, and it is known as the nucleoid. The cytoplasm being all the jelly stuff in here. You also you're going to notice that there are ribosomes floating around in here because it still needs to make its uh, its proteins. And here are some of the really neat uh, interesting features. Oh, let me back up here. You still have a cytoplasmic membrane. Um, this is also basically you could say plasma membrane or cell membrane because you still need to control what comes in and out of the cell. And here are some of the interesting features. These pili. Um, they're basically little hairy extensions, and think of them kind of like Velcro hooks that allows this bacteria to cling to stuff a little bit better. So if this would be a bacterium that would make you, give you uh, maybe a sinus infection or something like that, these pili would help cling to the inside of your sinus cavities. They also have a cell wall. This cell wall is made out of a structure called peptidoglycan which is spelled like this. Peptidoglycan, if you look at the word, it's telling you what it's made out of. The peptidal part refers to a protein, and the glycan refers to a carbohydrate like glycogen. So as you can see here, this is made out of carbohydrates and proteins. You're also going to see a capsule. This capsule, if you can remember when you learned about Frederick Griffith's experiment, about how you had the smooth and the rough bacterium, this capsule is a nice little like mucusy, snotty, cud, maybe a jelly-like coating, and that makes it a little bit harder for the immune system cells to maybe grab it. And then our final structure that we see here is the flagella. Remember flagella? You can learn about it here a little bit later. They are made out of microtubules. Uh, microtubules is a word that simply means tiny tubes, and these tiny tubes are made out of protein, and um, these microtubules are arranged in a 9 by 3 um, arrangement. And we'll talk about that later in this chapter. And this is just basically used to make it swim. Uh, think of like a sperm cell, how it can just kind of swim tadpole-like throughout a uh, whatever kind of aquatic environment is. But I want you to remember, easy way to remember this, although this is not exactly what the word means, pro means no, no nucleus or organelles. The second type of cell is eukaryotic. Now, the prefix eu means true. Come on here. Eu means true. And all true cells have a nucleus. And it also is going to have membrane-bound organelles. And what membrane-bound means is that the organelles themselves have membranes about, around them. Okay, so let's highlight some of this one. 
U means true. True cells have a nucleus, and they're going to have membrane-bound organelles. All right. Now, most living things are made up of eukaryotic cells. For example, all animals are made up of eukaryotic cells. So animals are eukaryotic, which means humans are. All plants are eukaryotic. All the fungus that's among us are eukaryotic. And all the protists. So if you think about how there's five kingdoms, animals, plant, fungi, protista, and then monera, or prokaryota. Um, the prokaryotes are their own kingdom, and the only thing that's in there is bacteria for the most part. All right? Now, this picture that we have down here is your typical eukaryotic cell, and in fact, this one's an animal cell. You can tell that it's an animal cell because it is round. It's not square. You don't see a cell wall, and there's no chloroplast. The number one thing that makes it eukaryotic is this nucleus right there. And the nucleus is made out of a couple of parts. You get your nuclear membrane, also known as the nuclear envelope. This little yarny stuff in here, that would be the DNA. Uh, and then this dark place right there, that is called the nucleolus. Other things you're going to see in here, see this stuff that's real bumpy? This would be the rough ER. We'll cover that in another podcast coming up. Uh, this orange guy right here, this is our Italian friend that works in shipping, Mr. Golgi. These blue kind of jelly bean looking things. These are your mitochondria. Um, they are the powerhouse of the cell because they're going to make our buddy ATP. Obviously, the cell membrane. These two things right here, these are centrioles. These are used during cell division. And they have that 9 by 3 structure that we saw in the, um, um, the flagellum. All right, you see this pink thing right here? kind of looks like coral. That's smooth ER. And ER stands for endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, the difference between the rough and the smooth, you see these little dots right here along the rough? Those are ribosomes. Smooth has no ribosomes. The rest of these other little structures in here, we'll explain what those are in a later podcast. All right. Well, that'll conclude, conclude this podcast on the two types of cells. Just remember, eukaryotic those have a nucleus, you means true, and in prokaryotic, pro means no, no nucleus.